continuing on, we've got some more formed elements to talk a little bit more about in detail. So leukocytes are another type of formed element, and they collect in that buffy coat in the middle when you spin down whole blood. And the first way to categorize leukocytes, first of all, they're all immune cells. So another term for leukocytes equals white blood cells. Um, you saw these in the blood sample in lab. They're bigger than red blood cells. They have a nucleus, often multi-lobed, so there's a lot more to them. And the purple, and they're bigger. I think I said that already. The first way to categorize leukocytes is just by an appearance thing, and it's granulocytes and agranulocytes, so ones where there's visible granules and ones where there's not visible granules. It's not actually much meaning besides that. And in these agranulocytes, there are some granules that are just too small to see. Um, there are some commonalities between the two, so I'm not gonna test you on what's a granulocyte and what's not, because um, it's not that helpful, I don't think. But I do think it's helpful to know the granules um, that are in here contain, a little like sacs inside the cell that contain some stuff. So enzymes to break down invaders um, and other stuff that that particular cell needs. So that's what those granules are. And that's why all of these cells have some granules to some extent. Some are just bigger than others, more obvious. So I'm going to um, fairly briefly go through these cell types. Um, and they're actually named for the stain where they're best seen. So the names aren't really that meaningful. Um, the first, you've got your neutrophils, and these are actually the most prevalent in your immune system, um, in your blood. I mean, these are quick responder, first responders, um, and they are phagocytes. So that means that they can ingest um, foreign invaders, bacteria, especially for neutrophils. They are specialized for bacteria. So they will take bacteria into the, themselves, phagocytose, which is a type of endocytosis, that's a vessel there. And they take in the bacteria and break it down with um, catalytic enzymes to destroy the bacteria. Pretty cool. Okay, eosinophils, um, staying with the eosin dye, they look kind of like this. And they have various functions, a little bit more varied. Um, but some of their functions include phagocytosis as well. They are kind of specialized for um, parasitic infections, like parasitic worms. Um, and they also release cytotoxic chemicals, as a lot of white blood cells do. So cytotoxic means things that are toxic, right, to other cells cytotoxic. Um, yeah, that's good for those. Basophils, these are your, basically what you think of, you think of an immune reaction, an inflammatory reaction. So they release histamine, which you know results in a kind of a local reaction to a substance, so um, an acute allergy. So these are going to be important for um, inflammatory response They also release um, heparin, which is an anticoagulant that will briefly come up when I talk about coagulation, um, blood clotting. The importance of an anticoagulant will also become, will be mentioned. That's basophils. Then we've got our agranulocytes. Lymphocytes are actually our most broad. There's three categories. These are B lymphocytes, T, lymphocytes, also called B cells and T cells. I'll write that because it fits. And natural killer cells, which I don't have room to write the whole thing, natural killer cells. Um, so these all have kind of different specialties in terms of how uh, acute versus long-term adaptive immunity. I'm not going to go into lots of details on that. Natural killer cells, for example, um, are recognized cells that are not self, so foreign cells. Um, and including cancer. So it's recognizing antigens on the surface of other cells. And they provide then nonspecific immunity to that. 
Some of these other cells are related to vaccinations in terms of acquired immunity. So learning what, um, what specific invaders you've seen before and being able to mount a quicker reaction the next time. I'm not gonna go into more detail on lymphocytes in this class. That's definitely an extra credit opportunity to um, write more, write up something, especially lymphocytes, there's a lot more there, but any of these really. Lastly, monocytes. Um, these are big old um, phagocytes. So they are also going to ingest foreign material for debris that's floating around, um, old cells, so red blood cells that are done with their life, other damaged cells. When monocytes enter other tissues, they get different names, which is very annoying. Um, the one you might see the most often are macrophages. So macro macrophages are cells that have, are monocytes that have left circulation and therefore um, are going to ingest things that are outside of the blood circulation itself. So monocytes are specific to when they're in circulation, not a huge deal. Um, macrophages as well as other white blood cells also are gonna be releasing um, chemicals to attract other white blood cells and to um, kill cells as well. Okay, so let's do a learning check here. What cell type is best at phagocytosis of bacteria? And then what cell type contains hemoglobin? 